This is the story of a VTuber who patiently never gave up hope, and an artist who rose to the challenge of creating a design that would give all 92,000 viewers instant serotonin. Project Hope's V-Singer Iris of Hololive English debuted on July 11, 2021, and served as the follow-up to the company's stellar success of Hololive Myth just 10 months prior. Hololive did an amazing job hyping her up, and the fans' expectations were at an all-time high from the incredible success of their previous Hololive English generation. She was received by fans with open arms, but others gave criticism for her model's appearance. Some of her fans mentioned having to get used to her face over time. Others would go so far as to refuse to watch her for her appearance. Like, really guys? After a year of streaming and holding off on any new outfits or an official 3D debut, Iris is getting a redesign. And to celebrate the occasion, I want to know what exactly were the issues with the first model, and how were they addressed with her second model? For the sake of clarity, we are going to label the designs Iris 1.0 and Iris 2.0. Alright, let's go over Iris 1.0 first. Iris's designer and illustrator papa is Yamasaki Tomoyuki, also known as Red Juice. He is an anime and game character designer who has a painterly style with characteristically detailed use of texture. Longtime Vocaloid fans would know this artist for the album cover he did of a very popular Supercell song, The World Is Mine. I totally geeked out when I learned that. Red Juice has quite the varied portfolio of anime and game character design that is nothing short of stunning. The amazing brush strokes and visual effects used in his digital art is spectacular. It's no wonder why Red Juice has worked on characters for popular video games such as Fate Grand Order. Whether it be sci-fi, mech designs, or something more ethereal, this artist delivers a unique character design for every project he contributes art for. Red Juice's strength is attention to detail and intricacy, and Iris 1.0 is no exception. Just look at the many breakdowns, angles, and explanations in her reference sheet. It just shows how much care and thought was put into the design of her model. So how is it even possible that a VTuber made by such a successful artist garnered so many detractors? And why have so many people felt Iris needed a redesign? I asked some of my friends and viewers to give their perspective, and after reading what my community had to say, Say, I think I can boil it down into three points. Art style. Simply put, Red Juice did not adapt their art style for the project. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying every VTuber should be done in the same art style. In fact, I am a large advocate for the opposite. I love artists who push the boundaries of Live 2D and the status quo set by large VTuber companies. So when one of those large VTuber agencies pushes the boundaries of their own status quo by hiring an artist with a unique art style, I get very excited. I'm not in the camp of people that hate Iris's model simply for the fact that she has a nose bigger than a dot. I mean, obviously. <laughs> Look at my own nose. <laughs> I'm also not personally bothered that she doesn't match the other talent's art styles on the screen during collabs. I personally want more art style variation in Hololive and not less. But there is a factor that we do have to take into account here. After all, different mediums of art tend to find guidelines over time that help the end product of whatever they're trying to make. For example, 2D hand-drawn animation tends to use low detailed designs and cell shading, whereas 3D animation can be as textured as it likes, but struggles to capture the same expressiveness as 2D animation. The artists must take into account what medium a character design will be used for when designing the character. There's going to be a big difference between character design philosophies when it comes to making characters for TV shows, movies, video games, and each of their respective genres and mediums. Which leads into my next point. Live 2D execution. I think Iris 1.0's real problem has to do with the fact that she is Red Juice's first VTuber child. An experienced Live 2D illustrator instinctively takes into account what the Live 2D rigor will have to do to bring their design to life. They have a sense of how each part will look in motion as they are illustrating that can only be gained from experience. I can't exactly confirm this to be the case, but I'm pretty sure that this was Red Juice's first time drawing for Live 2D, and due to that inexperience, Red Juice wasn't able to imagine how Iris would look in motion as he was designing her. For those of you who aren't familiar with the process, 
Live 2D is a completely different workflow to a typical illustration. A model must be drawn with moving layers in mind, and such layers must look good when being bent and stretched by warp deformers. This is why Iris looks better as a still image than in motion. She is a wonderful illustration for, say, an RPG character portrait for a game, or the cover of a magazine. But when it comes to the Live 2D model, Iris's hyper-realistically shaded nose bends and stretches in an uncanny way when she turns her head. Returning to her ref sheet, this hair would be so cool if she was in any other medium. Because it's behind her, it's impossible to understand how it works just from her live 2D model. Because we will never see her from the side or back. And because of that, it's clear to me that Iris wasn't designed with the limitations of live 2D in mind. Furthermore, because her design is so complex, Iris has to have a lot of layers, which is most likely why she has not received any alternate outfits yet. Speaking of complex layers, let's talk about it. Clarity. The designers of VTuber characters for top agencies such as Hololive not only have to keep Live 2D in mind, but everything else the talent will be involved in. That includes crossovers, music videos, marketable plushies, 3D concerts, idol uniforms, fan art in various styles, group promotional, you name it. The VTuber design needs to look good in all of these settings. And I believe Iris 1.0 is very hard to adapt into some of these contexts gracefully. That does raise the question, how would Iris 1.0 look in 3D? She's never been given an official 3D model like the other talents in Hololive, but I believe it would be very difficult to make her look good on stage with all the layers of hair and very soft detailed features of her face. I know that professional 3D modelers are pretty much magicians when it comes to what they can pull off, but I still feel like perhaps this may have been part of the reason why Cover decided on this redesign. As explained in a previous video, link in the description, clarity is an incredibly important part to VTuber design. And I believe that Iris's 1.0 design lacks some of that clarity. There are a lot of ideas explored with her model, and some of them honestly compete with one another. But surprisingly, I believe this was actually intended by the artist. Iris is meant to be a young half-demon half-angel, also known as a Nephilim. She is meant to embody a conflicting energy, and I believe Red Juice succeeded in that. However, I still believe that in execution, it's a bit too muddied for our marketable idol VTuber. Again, as a standalone piece of art about a conflicted Nephilim, it's beautiful. But as a marketable plushie in a simple art style, it doesn't always work. In conclusion, Iris's 1.0 received a redesign because Reju Sensei did not adapt their art style to the typical look for live 2D models, which meant the illustration lacked the clarity that fans tend to prefer in other Hololive VTuber models, which caused the live 2D execution of her model to give viewers an uncanny look to it. Hence, why she was in need of this long-awaited 2.0. And so, the redesign finally came. I'm recording this just as I finished watching Iris's model reveal and wow, I'm so glad I decided to make a video on this because I think the changes that Red Juice made are so genius. Me and the other 92,000 viewers could feel the excitement radiating from Iris tonight for sure. I feel like as a VTuber designer, I can actually learn a lot from the decisions that Red Juice made in the making of Iris 2.0. So. How did Red Juice redesign Iris to address the issues with her 1.0? Let's talk about it. Art style. The immediate thing that catches my eye about Iris's 2.0 is how Red Juice adapted his art style to the commonly desired aesthetics of VTuber fans. Now Iris will fit in with the rest of the Hololive models in Collapse. More notably, Red Juice committed to a thin line art for the majority of her model, including adding a dot to represent her nose, rather than keeping it soft and painterly like the 1.0. I do personally wish that her nose was not shrunk down in the process, but I do understand that the target demographic is male anime fans. And feminine faces in anime tend to do a similar thing when representing noses. But seriously, 
Big Nose Gang rise up. More Big Noses in anime character design, please. On that same note, I consider this change in art style that Red Juice did to be a bit of a trade-off. On one hand, the 2.0 art style is much more appropriate for the setting of Hololife and will be more marketable in the long run. But on the other hand, some uniqueness of the 1.0 had to be lost in the process. But overall, I still believe this change in art style to be for the greater good of Iris's branding under Hololive. If she was an indie VTuber, things might be different. Live 2D It's clear to me that Reju studied up on his Live 2D between Iris's 1.0 and 2.0 designs. This time, Iris was designed with Live 2D in mind. The most obvious change in approach for the 2.0 is how the parts were designed to be separate and shown at different angles. Her bangs, nose, and eyes no longer have the problem of looking as if they were a flat plane because of Red Juice's more advanced separation of layers. The uncanny movement of her face has been completely eradicated. Not only that, but this time around, Iris's body and face were drawn with the symmetry tool, which most Live 2D professionals use to keep the rigging consistent. Toggles were also added to Iris's halo and wings, allowing the talent to choose how much space she wants her model to take up on screen, which is just a nice quality of life update for our favorite Nephilim. Which also leads us to discuss Iris's upgrade in clarity. To improve the clarity of Iris' design, Red just selected the most important themes to her character and made them the center focus of the design. Her color palette was simplified, lightened, and saturated into a bright magenta-based palette. Speaking of colors, we have to mention that Iris' 1.0 had a vertical split of black and white, whereas Iris 2.0 mostly ditched the black and has a more horizontal split of her light and dark motif. This is also reflected in her much more obvious double halo, where the black and white halos are now separated into two layers. The 1.0 halo was so difficult to see that Iris actually had to end up clarifying to those making pre-debut fan art that her halo was black and white. The thin dots with no outlines get lost if the background is too light or too dark, and end up being impractical when chroma keying her model. The crystal iris brooch is it brooch or brooch? It's brooch. The crystal iris brooch on her collar was kept in the 2.0, but now it's paired with more crystal adornments throughout her design to make it feel more integral to her theming. The wing shape is once again repeated in the dress, but this time these shapes are repeated in her skirt rather than her bodice. Previously, I feel like the wing motif of the 1.0 dress design was easy to miss because the loud sparkly tutu drew attention away from it. Speaking of the tutu, this time it was placed underneath her outer dress, making it a more subtle part of her design that no longer competes with her hair. Her hair was significantly simplified into two twin tails with much less volume, and now represents two treble clefts rather than the four complex layers of hair she originally had. The new horns jut out less and lost their second pair in the 2.0, which in my opinion really didn't need simplification. I thought the original horns were fine, but more on that detail later. As a result, Iris 2.0 looks more clear in the thumbnail size and has a simpler silhouette, which will make it easier for fan artists to recreate her likeness. I also hope this means that the clear- I also hope that this- I hope- I also hope- I hope this you, also you means could, that the do. clear- I hope that this also means that clear merchandising, alternate outfits, and a 3D form will now be possible for Iris. Character lore. One more thing I'd like to point out is how this redesign actually fits very neatly into Iris's character lore. To recap, Iris is a Nephilim who is set to change forms depending on her emotions. Considering her lighter appearance and mainly white outfit, it's as though Iris transformed into a more predominantly angelic form because she is happy with her current life as a streamer. Perhaps because she has lifted so many spirits with her message of hope, she has, in a way, become more good than evil. This is reflected in the way her demonic horns became a single smaller pair, and how her white halo now rises above the dark halo. Regis even included Bloom and Gloom, the representation of her audience on Iris's shoulders, probably at the request of Iris herself. 
Not many agency affiliated VTubers are able to receive a model design that includes a touch from their fan base, so it's particularly special. The flower at her waist has been clarified from a generically magical looking flower to clearly be an anemone flower, which, if we are going by the Japanese meaning of the flower, symbolizes anticipation of something to arrive, which in this case is hope. In other parts of the world, anemone flowers are considered to be a bad omen and are associated with mourning, which also fits her Nephilim lore. I find the decision of her 2.0 model to act as a progression of Iris's character lore to be a wonderful touch to the whole event. It's almost as if it represents her character progression as a confident creator, finally at peace with herself and her appearance. Red Juice delivered something truly special to Iris and her fanbase, and it gives us a unique window into the thought process of a professional artist delivering a more effective live 2D design. It's a reminder to us artists that we should never stop learning, and we should always continue to receive feedback even once we've made it as professionals in the industry. Red Juice did just that and made a lot of people happy as a result. To recap, Red Juice adapted his art style to better suit the context of Iris's character design, the context in this case being Hololife. He then studied some of the techniques that Live 2D illustrators use to ensure the rigging goes smoothly. When revisiting the design, Red Juice clarified the concept by deciding what was most important to the character and reiterated those few themes throughout the design. He kept he kept the future endeavors of the talent in mind, such as potential 3D concerts, and simplified the design to make that possible. And finally, Red Juice tied in Iris' established lore into her new look, making the transition seamless for her fans and added personal touches to celebrate Iris and her community she built. By studying Red Juice's progression of Iris' design, I feel more ready to tackle my own 2.0 live 2D model. Though I am an indie VTuber and don't exactly have to worry about my art style matching any agency's pre-established brand image, I'm still excited to apply the other techniques Red Juice used in Iris's 2.0 into my own design. What do you guys think about Iris's 2.0 model? Do you miss anything about her 1.0 design? Let me know in the comments below. As regular members of the Bat Bunch would know, I always take the time to reply to everyone who leaves a thoughtful comment. So I'm definitely looking forward to the discussions held beneath this video. See you next time. And as always, take care Bat Bunch.